Hello drummers and other creatures, we're back with another part of the technical primer for Afrobeat drumming. This is part three. In the first two parts we looked at the bass drum variations and the snare variations. Today we're going to look at how we play on the hi-hat. Originally I showed you some patterns that were to be played on the ride so that you could operate your left foot on the hi-hat, or whichever foot it is you're using, but you operate your hi-hat foot. Um, but you're not too distracted by that. But now we're going to get distracted by that because we're going to take the original bass drum patterns and snare drum patterns and we're going to combine them uh, with the hi-hat stuff that we can do. The first thing being that we're going to play our ostinato on the hi-hat. And then we're going to be opening and closing the hi-hat on the two and four. And the trick here with the Tony Allen style or something that certainly jumps out to me is that we're going to keep the hi-hat moving, but we're not going to play an open sound unless we decide to. So it's going to be something like this. Cool, isn't it? And this is something that you can use in any facet of your hi-hat playing. Um, and I'd, I'd not really noticed, I'm, I'm sure there must have been other people who've done this sort of thing before, but, but maybe not. But this ability to keep the hi-hat pumping away, and then just by modifying the movement of the foot a little bit, and then in a later video I'll show you how we can do this by modifying the hand pattern or changing the hand pattern, but we can create open sounds. Um, and just then you've got that sort of regular pulse going with the hi-hat foot. So again, let's review the, the, the basic pattern, the ostinato. Now I keep saying this, um, Tony Allen recommends playing always heel down. I can't do it, I'm heel up on this one. I can't get the hi-hat moving fast enough to keep the closed sound while I'm playing up top here. So I'm doing it heel up. I, I kind of feel slightly guilty for not working that one out. But there you go. Um, work on that for a little bit first. And then, you know, if, if you find that at all tricky, you'll see why I started off with the ride. Because you can always go back to the patterns on the ride and, and just sort of try and concentrate on moving the left foot without getting distracted by the actual sound that it makes, the hi-hat foot. Now, in due course, we're going to produce some open sounds by changing the rate at which we open and close the hi-hat. Now, for me personally, I'm going to be moving from a kind of heel up to a heel down style to move between those things because I haven't worked out how to play heel down fast enough for uh, you know generating this sort of effect. I haven't worked out how to play heel up slow enough to get the sort of swelling sound of a sort of pea soupy type of thing. So it's not perfect. I, f I feel like I need to review my, my hi-hat foot technique maybe. The, the world is full of imperfections. Um, but the reason I'm saying this is just because you might find there's a little bit to negotiate to make this work depending on what your hi-hat foot likes doing. But that's the essence of the trick. Now, I've got my sheet here so I can remember what some of the patterns were. And let's look at like the bass drum thing that we started with. And even just the, the very basic pattern, we're looking at a bar of two beats here, one and two and, or one and a two and a, one and a two and a. And the very first pattern on the sheet, and you can download the PDF by looking in the uh, link in the description. Um, I'll, I'll link to that and there's the bass drum and the snare drum stuff from the first two videos on that sheet. And so that's the thing we're going to work with. Now, uh, bass on one, snare on two, just to start with. Hi-hat going up and down. OK, 
get yourself nice and comfortable with that simple pattern. And next, I would try and modify the rate at which you open the hi-hat so you can spontaneously produce some open hi-hat sounds. So maybe um, we'll get it going again a little bit and I'll start opening on the first beat and then on the second beat just for variety. Okay, and you may find that working on this stuff with the simplest possible combination, and I don't think any of this stuff is simple. I've been working on Tony Allen's drumming style for a long time. I, I don't think I've uh, done it justice yet, if, if, ever, if I ever get the chance to, but um, always try and figure out what's the simplest thing that you could do to get yourself used to something and try and settle into it as much as reasonably possible. Uh, and again, I think this is another repeating theme for me is don't drive yourself potty trying to get everything perfect at first. You're going to find yourself learning things at a simple level, getting better at it, doing something more complex, and then going back to the simpler thing uh, time and again to improve and polish things. I know I do all the time. Okay, now let's look at another one of these bass drum patterns. Let's say, well, the, the again, what I feel is the characteristic bass drum is the one in the E. So we've got this. And when you've got that feeling comfortable, again, exactly the same, it's just a procedure. Try opening the hi-hat and see what happens. Now we've got the bass sort of crossing through the movement of the hi-hat, so you may find that you need to spend a bit more time with that, the bass on the one and the E, rather than just the one. There's the, the coordination gets a bit fiddlier. So don't be afraid to slow yourself down. Don't be afraid to, to go back to the ride for a little bit, just to tune yourself into the whole me mechanics of it, to think about how your feet are moving up and down in, in conjunction with each other sometimes and in opposition at other times. Uh, let's try one more. Let's add the bass drum on the R uh, of the one. So we've got one E, R, uh, like this. Oh, that was wrong. And then everything's dancing about a little bit keep this thing on. Um, so that's what you want to work through again until you can open the hi-hat on, on the one or the two as you like. Now let's have a look at the, the snare variations and I've given you enough of an idea you can go away now and start working on this. Um, the main thing is to take those patterns and have a go with the hi-hat pattern. First of all get comfortable with moving the hi-hat uh, without making the open sound and then start opening the hi-hat. But just for, for fun, let's uh, get some snare drum variations in. So let's do the 2E on the snare and see how we get on with that. Bass is now going to play, according to my sheet, just the 1E all the time. Another example I haven't quite got from Tony Allen yet is he was a very light, fluffy player. I'm being a little bit heavy here, but you get the idea. Okay, here's one more just to try. Um, I know what's good. Let's do the three uh, 16ths in a row. So the two E and like this.
right, and there you have it. Now, once you've methodically gone through all those options, once you've played each pattern with the hi-hat foot going up and down without an open sound, and then with the open sound on the one, on the two, as you like, uh, always, it, you know, with any of these things, when you're trying to internalize some vocabulary, the next stage would be to improvise with it a little bit, meaning you could mix up the bass and snare patterns, and then you can try opening the hi-hat at will. Now, um, I always think it's a good idea to improvise, even if you don't feel 100% confident that you've mastered everything, because even if it comes out a little bit of a mess, your brain is starting to get stimulated to sort of arrange the little neural pathways to enable you to do this stuff. So on one hand, practice things slowly and carefully, um, you know, be very precise and accurate and pay attention and all of this stuff, but then at some point, throw caution to the wind, and just have a go at playing the thing. And don't be worried about what the results are. I think that's an important part of it. Okay, so a little bit of an improvisation. And so on and so on. That was, that was pretty much that. Hopefully, that starts putting together the threads with the, that'll allow you to spontaneously play some Afrobeat-type stuff. Even if you're not passionate about Afrobeat, um, you'll find that this sort of stuff can help your funk playing, help your rock playing. There's loads of coordination happening here, and it, it kind of feels like it's bringing together the coordination that you'd have with swing, drumming, jazz, whatever you want to call it, and uh, sort of straight 16th note funk. And, and things like that. So it's all very interesting, I like it. I hope you enjoy this. I hope you find this useful if you are trying to get into this style of drumming or if you just want to develop your coordination. Um, let me know what you think. Uh, is there anything else I could bring to the topic? I've got a couple more videos in this series coming. Meanwhile, thank you very much for watching this. Uh, give me feedback, thumbs up in the um, thumbs up bit, subscribe on the subscribe bit, comment in the comments bit, it's all good. Now I think it's time for you to go off and practice.